biggest criticism people say is you can't run the G90 uh, in the heat. Uh, you can't run it in the man pack and you certainly can't run it in the desert. I call 100% BS on that. Hey guys, it's Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. I'm out here in the Tonto National Forest for a field exercise and a little bit of training, uh, physical fitness, combo, a bunch of stuff. But primarily, I want to test the G90 for the first time in the field. People do have concerns about that radio in the man pack and in the heat. And while it's not even close to our warmer temps, uh, we are about 85 degrees right now and uh, I don't think it's going to be a problem for my style of uh, communication. So this freestyle video is just to kind of bring you guys along for the journey. It is going to be longer. We're going to look at the G90. I've got a couple of antennas, a couple of uh, communication modes that I want to execute on that uh, will be largely targeted contacts in the region. Uh, I'm going to try to leave a relay for my wife. Um, but I want to walk you guys through kind of what I do. So I've got my pack here. And uh, the first thing I like to do is set up the shelter. But before we get into that, I do get one criticism a lot is why do I carry all of this heavy gear? And uh, while I, when I trail run, I actually do run ultralight gear and try to keep it fairly modest. Um, I did a trail run a couple weeks ago where I basically had a 20 pound pack with the combo gear and the support gear. Uh, this is a little bit different. This is the Everly Stock Fact Track. I absolutely love this rig. I've uh, been running it now for a few years and it's the only rig that really does uh, survive out here in the desert, but it has a dry weight of about six pounds. Uh, when I do an overnighter, I have to bring at least eight liters of water. I think that's about two pounds per liter, so at least 16 pounds worth of water, about 16 pounds in communications gear for HF, and probably another 16 to 20 pounds in support gear um, and all that stuff. Uh, not going quite as heavy today, just have two liters of water for today, uh, maybe about another half liter in the hydration bladder. So I'm not gonna weigh this, guys. Uh, my philosophy here and the reason why I wanted to talk about this is that if I need gear to go out into the field, I don't wanna have to worry about ounces all the time. I mean, I don't wanna bring unnecessary luxury items or duplicates or triplicates. Uh, my thought is I just need to train a little bit harder if at the time I arrive at the camp or get back home, um, I feel really terrible and really depleted then it's just an indicator that I'm not training hard enough and you need to work towards that. Again, that's just my philosophy. Uh, anyways, uh, here's one of the new antennas we're gonna be looking at. Uh, this is the Stinger for the uh, RM-40. I've been mostly using that uh, vehicle mounted, but I figured we'll try it on the man pack. So uh, let me set up the shelter and I'll walk you guys through that. All right, guys, I've got the tarp shelter set up. Technically, it's a poncho shelter, but I do the same thing when I was running tarps. Uh, this way, I can actually use uh, the poncho for multiple uh, uses. So just use the trekking poles, which I used up here for the assist. I also use them at the, as the supports for my antennas in the field. Uh, so a lot of different uses uh, for the gear. And uh, why we need it out here is really just to escape the sun. It's really not so much for, for rain. So just to get out of direct uh, sunlight uh, throughout the day. And there's plenty of room down there. I showed you guys this many times, but uh, if there's only one knot, I would highly recommend you guys learn, and that is the taut line hitch. This allows you to change the length of the line just by pulling it up, and then that goes down into a stake. Now, I always bring pencil and paper, typically a write in the rain notepad and a pen, and uh, I actually forgot one thing. I was switching my gear quite a bit between this and my trail pack, and I was actually building a second tarp shelter kit, and I was missing one stake. So you can kind of see here how I had to improvise with a rock here. So that's gonna go on the list so that when I get back to the house, I can remedy that with another 10 stake and S-clip carabiner. So one of the reasons why I love the Eberly Stock Fact Track is because it has this giant compartment that you can zip down and then you also have a zipper to top load it. Uh, in terms of the gear, we're going to be running the FZM1. Uh, I do like this Elite EDC uh, bag. I found this at a gun store and it actually fits the uh, a couple of extra batteries for the FZM1 as well as all the charging cables in this compartment uh, for DC and then I also have the unit in the main uh, outer compartment. I also brought my TTP MCOM link dipole. I don't know if we're going to deploy this today because over here we've got the Hustler RM-40 and we're going to try to mount it to the frame. We'll see how that goes. That's a new project. I actually had to come up with a counterpoy system uh, this morning. More on that later. And then uh, the bad boy here, this is the G90 man pack for 
uh, the collaboration video I'm doing with, with Isaac. And uh, can't remember what the weight is. I will put the weight for this one, but there at the bottom, you can actually see the little piece of uh, fabricated um, jumper cable I did for a counterpoise, so we'll have a good ground system. And then uh, not much else here. So the pack was pretty light. I do have the solar, solar charge controller right here. Uh, we actually probably should put that up just in case. And then I've got the 20 watt folding panel uh, in this mesh pocket back here. And then everything else is just support gear in the other pockets. Here is the man pack, kind of first steps here. Almost every, actually everything does fit into the six by six admin pouch. I connected the power meter so we can figure out how much power we're using for this exercise. Uh, in the custom bag over there, I did pull out the Hustler RM40 resonator. It is fairly tiny, and this is the same one that I run on the Jeep behind the spare tire, and the same one that I run on my RV. Now, like I said, there is a, a stinger, and the way this works is you drop it in here, and then there are two set screws that you use to adjust uh, the length and the way you need to do that is actually with an SWR meter. Now I like the Rig Expert 230. I did not bring it because one of the things I want to test with a man pack is to see if we can tune it with the built in SWR uh, bridge on this unit. Uh, in order to do that as well, I have a small gear pouch that I designed that also fits in this bag. And there's a few uh, little uh, connectors, but here's the Allen key for it so that we can set those set screws. And then the last thing up here, this is the custom counterpoise wire I created this morning. I opted for 25 feet just to see if it would work. So we're gonna go ahead, run this out that way, and then uh, use the SWR uh, bridge on the G90 to see if we can tune it for the digital portion of the 40 meter band. All right guys, like I said, one of the objectives was to see how this little guy dealt with heat. And I've got the heat gun here and we're gonna turn it on. It's approximately uh, 12, 15 local time. And I found that most of the heat actually builds up right at the top of the head unit and at the top of the main unit. And we're reading 75.9 degrees. So we'll call it 76 degrees for right now. And uh, we're gonna take measurements this entire time. Like I said, it's fairly cool here. Uh, the hottest that I typically will operate here in the summer, usually in August, is around 110 to 114 degrees ambient temperature. Uh, I've done field day like that. Uh, in fact, that was my first contact was on field day, I think four years ago coming up in, uh, uh, was it August? Anyways, so stay tuned. Oh, and the reason why the RM-40 is at an angle, it actually just has to do with the fact of how everything is mounted right now. This very much was an afterthought and not something I designed. And the only way for me to clear the connector is to cant it this way because it'll actually hit with the uh, DigiRig mobile. And the nice thing about the setup is that I can actually disconnect the coax here and switch it back over to the normal uh, BNC mount here. So have two relocation brackets to go off there. So like I said, freestyle videos are long. Uh, basically just walk you through the experiments and narrate them. If there's value, stick around. The first thing we need to do is see if we can actually uh, see where we are in terms of our resonant frequency. It's just gonna be a long press of the power button. And we can see there that we've got a nice little dip there. And it looks like we're resonant at 6.853 megahertz, which means the antenna is actually too long. So we need to drop down the stinger a little bit. All right, guys, I dropped it down just a little bit and you can see we're 1.5 to one. So I'll call that good for right now. And then all we'll do is just clean it up with the tuner. All right, so we're tuned up there. Okay, guys, this is where I'm gonna do my public service announcement. Uh, this type of training may look easy. In fact, I've been doing this now for several years and every time I come out here, it's an opportunity to refine and get better but it is by, ne by no means comfortable. Uh, I'm wearing these snake boots here because I am tired of dealing with the rattlesnakes when I'm bushwhacking. I've got my sidearm here in the drop leg holster. It's my Glock uh, 17. And uh, the lighting angles are terrible. The FZM1, as much as I love it, it only has a 500 nit display. So not terribly bright here. And I have it fully maxed out. Um, this is part of the reason why my MCOM tool software here that does the plug and play is designed to minimize the setup time while I'm out here and why I need to hit these comma windows. So we're um, kind of ready to go right now. I've got all of the gear set up 
and I'm gonna fire up JS8 call here in a minute. And my goal, goal is just to see if anybody can hear me with this antenna, specifically the Tech Prepper group. All right, guys, so there's uh, certain realities to operating in the field that are not just related to comfort. Uh, it's also being off grid. So I tried to send a heartbeat here and it's not working. And one of the first things that I'm gonna put into my plan uh, when checking out the gear in order to establish a communication is to make sure my clock is accurate. For JSA call, we have to be within a couple seconds. And as you notice there, the time in UTC is at 1938.30, and I'm about 12 seconds ahead uh, based on what's on my GPS-enabled watch. Now, there's a way for me to get the time signal using something like the WWV broadcast out of Fort Collins. I actually have uh, five channels programmed there on 2.5 uh, megahertz, 5 megahertz, 10, 15, 20, and 25. Um, I don't know if I did the math there right, but those are the correct ones. So I can audibly hear at the top of the minute to sync up, um, or I can use the GPS watch. For today, I'm just going to use the GPS watch and make sure that I synchronize uh, my time so that I'm able to get my JS8 uh, call uh, signal properly encoded and decoded. Uh, people can use GPS, but again, my goal here is to kind of uh, do this more simply and not have uh, the GPS running in the background all the time and polling for uh, the satellites. I want to preserve my gear. So I have two methods right now. One is WWV signal, which I can listen to over shortwave on this radio on the G90, or we'll just go ahead and sync it with the watch and I've got field cards for this. All right, so more to the point that this is not easy. I am really uncomfortable with this uh, sidearm and especially these boots and this angle. I'm gonna put up the, the video I recorded, but it took me four attempts just to get the command right to be able to set the time. And like I said, I waited for my watch to go to the top of the minute and then set it to that for local time. And then I used these little field cards that I created to do it manually. Again, this stuff takes practice. Uh, it actually wears down your equipment while you're in the process of doing it. And yeah, I get it. You can go out of your way to get a GPS dongle and set the time, but that's not the point. The point here is that doing things in the field, even in conditions like this, which are relatively easy, yeah, it's getting a little bit warmer under here and uh, I've got a time schedule to hit. All of these little things are so much more difficult to do out here in the field, but it's a great opportunity and I get a lot of satisfaction out of uh, being able to have you know, this worked for me in a austere environment. We done did do it, A.A. Ron. Let's see who got back to us. So we've got uh, three different signals. The first is KT7RUN, that's my station at home. My buddy Kilo Charlie 8, Oscar Whiskey Lima, uh, he's the guy that I actually want to talk to. And then also a local here, uh, that is Donnie down at the bottom. So not too bad. So this little uh, Hustler RM40, canted at an angle as a vertical with my homemade counterpoise is uh, doing the trick. So that is the operating position, guys. So technically, I probably should get the radio underneath there, but you can kind of see here is the, um, the counterpoise there, or actually, yeah, the counterpoise wire going off the backside here. We've got the RM40 uh, canted, and uh, that's the operating position. I probably should put some of the gear uh, underneath here. But I challenge everybody to try to do field day more than once or twice a year, especially like this where you're fully self-supported. There's nobody helping you and you have to adapt. But uh, I'm actually happy with this RM-40, mostly because I don't have to deal with the dipoles or the NFED. So another great reason why a JSA call is a great mode for MCOM because it can actually work way down in the noise floor. Guys, as uncomfortable as this is, that sound it's potentially music to my ears. Hope you can see this, but uh, I decided to send a relay to my buddy Mike. Again, this thing right now is acting as a Envis antenna. We're getting regional communication. I don't know what it is about the Hustler RM-40, the resonator, but I get Envis communication and local, which is wild. And uh, on here on the screen, I sent a message 220 miles from my location, and my message was relay India 1, okay at camp. My buddy Mike, who's my training partner, who has the same level of skill, equipment, and training, which is key. Him and I have a plan. He has a bunch of different designators. India 1 refers to, uh, in my case, my wife, but I have a few other. 
and he's able to send her a text message on my behalf. So radio to radio, him and I are able to communicate, and my wife, who is not interested in any of this amateur radio nonsense or garbage, this wind wants to wreck my video, um, she's able to get a message as a relay. More real-time goodness. Let's get the heat gun out, and uh, let's, ooh, yeah, we're cooking it. So our FZM1 is 140, we'll call it, 141 degrees Fahrenheit, and then the, uh, not bad, the uh, G90 is 115 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or so. So yeah, we're not cooking it here, folks, um, and we're in a very much austere environment. Uh, the wind is going like crazy right now. Uh, hopefully my audio is good. So hopefully you enjoyed this little uh, journey with me, uh, this mid-afternoon with me. And uh, like I said, my style of operation is probably very different than yours. Uh, I do enjoy the challenge in operating in austere environments. I find that it influences the physical fitness uh, and my day-to-day -day exercise levels so I can do these things and carry all of this gear out here. Uh, operating outdoors actually has its own set of challenges. Um, the wind today was a huge problem for me. It was actually fairly obnoxious. Uh, hopefully the sound was okay. But also the gear, I have to protect the gear. The biggest criticism people say is you can't run the G90 uh, in the heat. Uh, you can't run it in the man pack and you certainly can't run it in the desert. I call 100% BS on that. We ran it for just under an hour. The temperatures well, were within reason and we went ahead and were able to make our targeted contact using a compromised antenna on a very good MCOM mode. And like I said, guys, my camp is super uh, modest. And I'll tell you, uh, one of the guys that runs the TTP Elmer Hour Elmer as part of our uh, member perks on Buy Me A Coffee, uh, he challenged the group to actually do a, a wind link exercise in the dark uh, with no natural light and that posed a new set of challenges. And my buddy Mike saw that challenge and he's like, you know, as much as I like deploying the wire antennas because they're very performant, it would be challenging uh, in that type of scenario. And that's why I wanted today to go out and test this. Was it an ideal setup? Should the uh, resonator be vertical? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but did we make it work? Yeah, we made it work. So. Uh, anyways, let me know if you guys still want these kind of videos. I know these are longer, but it gives me an opportunity to share with you all the fails. In fact, there's one other fail uh, that I forgot to mention. I actually lost today and couldn't find it, the uh, set screw for uh, the stinger. And I bought a uh, replacement kit that has three stingers and a few set screws. And this is the second time that's happened to me. So now I know for a fact that I'm gonna have to continue to bring my little tin in my pouch and at the very least, I need to add one or two extra um, set screws for that exercise. And this is the only way we learn to uh, basically make those micro adjustments. Uh, also, I'm working on a design for the new man packs. Uh, it's gonna be a while before those ever go public. I need to finish the design process, make sure they work, test them in the field, and then they go to my gold members first, silver members next, and then basic. So it could be almost eight months before they go public. Um, I can't even promise a timeline for the supporting members, but it is a project that I'm working on. I'm also working on a set of field resources, uh, working through the design and the logistics for printing those and the materials. And it's all influenced by these types of exercises where I need to make sure that gear works in environments like this. All right, guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared.